So I'm Devin Berkshire. I'm director of conferences and fieldwide learning at TCG. And I'm so, I'm so happy to welcome you back for our third and final day of the national conference. Now, you might remember our first plenary when an illness forced Cheryl Strayed to cancel last minute and Teresa said, the show must go on. And thanks to the brilliant Lydia Yuknovich, it did. Well, <laughs> it's a reminder to always be careful what you say in theater because the gods are listening. <laughs> and they said, oh, oh, the show must go on, huh? Uh, so let's throw a plenary speaker plane cancellation at you then. But folks, we are theater people. And the show will go on because thanks to the generous spirit of our closing speaker who arrived very late last night, we're going to flip our plenary order today. Anand Giridadas will be featured this morning speaking, speaking and then in conversation with Andrea Asaf, founding artistic director of Art to Action. Now, you might be expecting P. Carl of HowlRound, but sadly, Carl sustained a knee injury that is preventing him from traveling. So we thank Andrea yep, for not only stepping in for Carl, but for being ready to jump in here a few hours earlier than planned. And Universes, fresh off a rescheduled flight, will be featured this afternoon in conversation with a very flexible Che Yu. <laughs> Planning this conference is starting to feel a little bit like Game of Thrones. <laughs> Don't get attached to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> All of, these, all of these near plenary catastrophes have reminded me that the only reason theater has survived the last couple thousand years or so is because it is deeply collaborative. Even one person's shows don't do it alone, and when one of us falters or falls ill or the weather gods intervene, we stand in, we step up, we hold on to each other, and the show really does go on. And so I just have to thank Hannah Fenlon, who on this wild, difficult ride has made this impossible event possible. Hannah, you, I don't know where you are right now, but you are the wonder woman of this conference. And everyone here owes you a big thank you. So we're going to say it, folks. You're going to say it with me. On three, ready? We're going to say thank you, Hannah. One, two, three. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. So when it comes to groups modeling shared leadership, a particular commons comes to mind. To help me honor them, please welcome Leslie Ishii to the stage. Oh my goodness, thank you. Um, I just want to look at all of you. I am deeply honored and humbled to be presenting this prestigious award. I traveled here to Portland from Los Angeles by car. So I'm driving from sprawling Los Angeles through the Tejon Pass and down into wide rural landscapes, the San Joaquin Valley. I see lush greenery. The West Coast growing season has begun. And as I reflect about this award presentation, I look at the fields and my mind turns to the start of Zeisler's and Guthrie's not-for-profit resident theater movement of the early 1960s. But quickly, my mind pivots to West Coast movements already cultivating the American theater field. Along the Interstate 5, I see field workers, and I recall the enforcement of the Bracero program, a series of U.S. Mexico federal laws that dehumanized workers as seasonal migrant workers in these very fields. 
I think as the Guthrie Theater completed its first season in 1964, the Bracero program was finally terminated. I drive past rows of grapevines and remember that by 1965, Mexican farm and artistic workers perform actos in the fields on flatbed farm trucks in support of the Delano grape strike. These political actions built the f and founded the El Teatro Campesino. It also built solidarity between the Filipino, Filipina, Japanese, and Mexican heritage workers that formed the United Farm Workers Union that has continued to influence and fight for all workers' rights. I drive past the Bay Area and I am reminded of the academic field, the Third World Liberation Front that rose in 1968, where a Latinx student stood up during the ethnic study strikes in solidarity with other college students of color. They fought for our stories, our histories, to remain chronicled in books, curriculums, courses, that it could be a legit legitimate major. They fought for the extension, the expansion of the Eurocentric history courses. And I think during this time, the Guthrie Theater has completed its fifth season and Zeisler rose as the sole leader of the Guthrie Theater. So simultaneously, the commitment to the regional theater movement was producing the likes of Shakespeare and Chekhov, while Latinx artists were also contributing the works from individual artists and the Milagros and the El Teatro Campesinos, the Pegrones, Teatro del Pueblos, and so many others around the country. And it was that commitment to each other, the theater field, the revolution that brought together and renewed us in 2012 when the initial meeting of the DC-8 led by Karen Zacharias at Arena Stage gave rise to the Latinx Theater Commons. <laughs> With the force of history behind it, it gave rise to its incredible body of work from Boston to New York City to Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas, Seattle, and back to Los Angeles this October for Latino Theater Companies, El Centro de las Americas Theater Festival. The LTC has also implemented the El Fuego Initiative to ensure the production of Latinx plays. They've also committed to preserving and forwarding the legacy of Maria Irene Fornes. So in this work, Latinx Theater Commons has now created a platform for regional movements and to ensure the work is happening locally and nationally to resist racism and counter forced assimilation with the theatrical tradition that is expanding the American and global classic canon. This canon is multiracial and multilingual, and in doing so, inspires us all to remember that the new American theater builds solidarity to honor each other's work and the revolution that is our ways of life, our cultural traditions, protocols, rhythms, intersectionality, aesthetics, and most of all, it reminds us that we are here to connect to each other as artistic and cultural workers to cultivate an equitable, inclusive field together. My dear, dear colleagues, it is my honor and my greatest joy 
to present the Peter Zeisler Memorial Award to my colleagues of the Latinx Theater Commons. Please join me in honoring and celebrating the work and the peoples of the Latinx Theater Commons. <laughs> Accepting. <laughs> you can keep standing, please keep standing. I now give you, accepting on behalf of Latinx Theater Commons, uh, producing uh, director Gail Vega. Gail Vegas? Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh my God. Abigail Vegas. Please give her, and the, and the steering committee, please give her another warm welcome. Thank you, Leslie. Um, I'm Abigail Vega. I'm the LTC producer, and I am so honored to be speaking on behalf of the steering committee, both here in Portland and also all of our members around the country. We are so grateful to the TCG staff and board who facilitated this award, the artists who nominated us for it, and the committee who chose to give it to us. Many, many members of our community have been nurtured and emboldened by a relationship with TCG over the years, and it means so much to be recognized in this way. Thank you. There is an irony in being honored as an organization when we intentionally are not one. <laughs> the Latinx Theater Commons is a living, breathing, always changing movement of theater makers updating the narrative of the American theater through collective action and generous spirits. But before we get too far, I want to set something straight. I alone am not the LTC. To really honor the LTC, first look to the 20-ish or so steering committee members standing alongside me, along with folks who are being uh, Skyped and FaceTimed in right now. <laughs> okay, so now imagine the nearly 60 more steering and advisory committee members not here with us today across the country. Now, look to the audience. If you have been involved in an LTC committee, helped plan an LTC event, or represent a foundation that has supported our work, please stand, because you're in the commons. Stand. <laughs> keep standing, keep standing. I'm adding, it's additive, yeah. If you uh, have attended one of our in-person convenings or participated live via HowlRound TV, also stand. Stand up as well. Okay, so we got more people, great. If you have joined one of our online communities via social media or Cafe Onda, please stand because you are in the comments. Keep standing, keep standing. Now imagine the veteranos y veteranas who came before Max Ferrer, Miriam Colon, Luis Valdez, Maria Irene Fornes, and all the ancestors on whose shoulders we stand who fought battles against racism and inequity we cannot even imagine. Finally, envision the countless leaders that are yet to come. This is the Latinx Theater Commons. The LTC was seated in 2012 by eight Latinx theater makers and the incredible minds at HowlRound, but the community that makes up our commons is rooted in so many places and programs, conferences and coffee dates, gatherings, formal and informal. We are the late nights of the Tenaz festivals of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. 
the electric Hispanic Playwrights Project, and those mentored by the singular Maria Irene Fornes. We are the meetings under the trees at TCG conferences in years past, the now established TCG conference affinity spaces, and the regional alliances supporting and connecting Latinx theater makers all across the country. We are the two Latina students in your college theater program who exchange monologues because their professor doesn't know where to look. <laughs> and the knowing glances between folks that say, are we really on this panel again? <laughs> we are the theater companies that have survived, thrived, and nurtured talent for decades, and the gatherings, coalitions, and visionaries yet to come. The LTC is modeling a commons. The concept of a commons is really very simple. It's the basic belief that some resources belong to everyone, and this wealth has to be protected, managed, and made accessible for the good of the whole. Commonses have existed and succeeded since the beginning of time. No one owns the wealth in a commons, because by its nature it cannot be owned. Now, we can inherit commons, think like the air or the oceans or religious texts, or we can create them for ourselves and for future generations. Today, the most popular online encyclopedia, Wikipedia, is a knowledge commons. And people just like you are using the principles of the commons to protect sacred waters and natural ecosystems, to create community-driven crowdsourcing, and to promote engaged citizenry around the world. By their very nature, commons challenge our transactional, market-based ideology and propose an alternative reality rooted in the abundance and the greater good. Our commons is an open think tank and brain trust of intergenerational practitioners. <laughs> our commons is not an affinity space. We welcome allies on our steering committee and at our events because we decided early on we needed to show up for each other. We are a self-organized, collective, non-hierarchical structure built on a series of concentric circles and made up of people who raised their hands and showed up. We step up when we are needed and we step aside when needed. Ideas take off or drop off depending on the pulse of the community. The LTC speaks truth to power. What we do isn't easy. We disagree, often. <laughs> Uh, however, <laughs> through a deep respect and trust for each other and our shared belief in the value of the commons, we have created something revolutionary. We fail constantly, and while we are not perfect, and we never could be, we'll never stop trying. The LTC was founded to make our own table instead of waiting to be invited to join one. It was... <laughs> <laughs> It was manifested on the radical premise that we all have the power to transform the American theater, and in fact, its future relevance demands that we do. <laughs> With voices raised together, we reject those narratives that marginalize us. We push back against a system that benefits by pitting us against each other. We defy those voices and an administration that seeks to eliminate us and our contribution to this culture. We stand together in all of our varied skin tones, languages, genders, countries of origin or connection, sexual orientations, Im and immigration statuses as the Latinx theater commons. We have taken matters into our own hands. And now, we stand among you and ask you to do the same. The Latinx theater commons is just one intervention to create the new American theater. What can we all do to create a theater that is an inclusive and equitable representation of all the peoples and cultures that make up this nation? Today, we ask you to consider what is your intervention? Thank you. Thank you, Abigail, and thank you to everyone in Latinx Theater Commons for 
advancing equity in our field on so many levels. <clears throat> We're now going to move into our third plenary, and it's going to be in three parts. First, we'll welcome Anand Giridardas to share his remarks. Anand is an author, most recently of The True American, Murder and Mercy in Texas, about a Muslim immigrant's campaign to spare from death row the white supremacist who tried to kill him, which is currently being made into a movie. He is a political analyst with NBC News and a contributor on so many news networks as a voice of empathy and reconciliation in our current political landscape. After his remarks, he'll be joined in conversation by Andrea Asaf, the founding artistic director of Art to Action. After their conversation, we'll have some time for Q&A before we close. Please join me in welcoming Anand Giridardas to the stage.